deviation in the uh, marriage uh, by law. Uh, I should have been study of marriage and uh, church marriages. There is a barrier there that we all need to know. When I marry the couple in court, I do defend them my other. But the law requires, what the law, law, law requires is what the law charges. Let no one separate except the law. So you see, there's a catch in there. On a, a church marriage, till that we part, right? So there is always a, a catch there that we need to be. In my court, I say, you when I call the father, I say, Kakaukilan Mon Court means before God. Before this court and before these witnesses. My colleagues don't do that. They just say, do you, you know, swear before the, this court and the witnesses that you will marry this thing, that you love, you will cherish her, you know, in sickness and in health, and that, you know, just the whole nine years. So there is variation here that we need to know, and that's what, you know, I, uh, do we do prayer in court? For me, I don't have any problem with it. For two reasons. I'm a judge and I'm also a minister. So there is no law that say I cannot pray in my court. It's a Western system. It's a system created by the Western. There is no law created in form on thing that say I cannot pray in my court. Sometimes when I do my homicide cases, I have silent meditation, like one, two minutes. I, 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 and yet I need somebody to challenge that so that we can look at this. So <laughs> I think we need to really know the three systems in order for us to come up with what is the most appropriate and powerful approach, how to do things with this. Because uh, the front place is right, you know. There is a catch to that. You can separate by law. And there are categories that you need to be violent, uh, mental. Uh, and there are some things that is, you don't need to wait separate for separation and wait two years in order for you to get a divorce. Those are automatic criteria that you can issue as a force. So, you know, uh, and I think that churches should bring it with that and uh, how, how they, how they want to weave them, you know, complement or supplement, or just say, uh, statutory marriage will not be accepted. Or we will accept based on something. I just want to throw out so that everybody please. Because a lot of people don't know that traditional marriage is not recognized by the law. I want to say this at, at first response to that. Our culture, in some respects, is no different than yours in that regard. It has re reached the point within our culture where anybody can marry anybody. It turns out performing the ceremony. It has nothing to do whether you're a magistrate, a judge, whether you're a lay minister, a pastor, a pastor of a church. Uh, it's getting completely and totally out of hand. And generally when those kinds of marriages are performed, Christ <coughs> is never mentioned in, in, that, uh, in the wedding vows. We had a great niece come to us a few years ago, probably eight years ago now. And she asked if I would do their wedding ceremony. First question I asked her was, are, are you saved? And she looked at me like, what am I talking about? I said, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? She said, well, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. Well, I said, I'm sorry, then I can't do your wedding ceremony. 
and I got in trouble with the family, but because of my stance, and I think it's an important stance that I take when those kinds of issues come before me, because what we are, are going to be facing in our culture here in the not too far distant future, when a gay couple comes to us to ask them to marry, we are going to refuse, but we're going to be facing a jail sentence. Because what we just did by refusing to do that ceremony is we discriminated against them. Our culture is getting so far out of hand to support these other lifestyles, it is becoming extremely difficult for the leadership of our church communities to marry couples who come to us under those kinds of attitudes or those kind of lifestyle that they want to live. But because of our faith and our relationship with Christ and what God's Word has to say about those kinds of relationships, they're an abomination to God. And if we marry them, we are an abomination to God. We have forsaken the vows that we have taken to love, honor, and obey our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we are to live for Him by what His Word tells us on how we should live and conduct our lives. And if I, as long as I have taken on the responsibility that I have, I have to live that responsibility based on the Word of God. Now I know that there are other pastors and other denominations that don't necessarily believe that. But I don't have to answer to God for them. I have to answer to God for myself. And, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Right. <clears throat> In that kind of situation, uh, we see 